I'll let Miss I'll let our special guest go first. I know you had a lot to say before the show, so go ahead, big dog. It, look, it's he who fails to learn from history is doomed to repeat it. This is look, I've seen this movie before. It's just like I've seen The Godfather a million times, and I've seen Top Gun a million times. It's the same difference. Once your productivity outweighs it, it, when when you're when when you're a nuisance and you're tweeting all the time. And you're you're just a pain in the every off season. There's some drama that comes comes along with him. And we've seen this with receivers. I don't know if it's more prevalent with wide receivers. We've seen this with T.O. leaving the forty. We've seen this with T.O. leaving the 49ers, leaving the Eagles, leaving the Cowboys. We saw this with Antonio Brown leaving the Steelers and the Raiders and the and the and the uh, Patriots. We've seen we've seen this movie. We've seen we've seen this. We we saw this with Stefan Diggs when he was with the Vikings. After a while, teams just get tired. They get tired. It's like you're not worth it. You're not worth the headache anymore. Buffalo started to see last year towards the back part of last season. They started to see we can win without this guy. They, it was the writing was in the wall. We saw it coming. We see we seen Trey Rex coming, and the only way that players can really voice themselves is to be able to withhold their services and get out of town. And the way to get out of town is to, to act up. We saw this with Jalen Ramsey trying to get away from the Jags. We, we've seen this. It was, it was, it was, it was inevitable. So yeah, I'm not surprised at all. And, you know, congratulations to them. Mr. Box office. You want to jump in now? I, I totally agree. Um, I think this whole trade is a win-win for both sides, the Texans and the Bills. And say win for everybody except Stefan Diggs. Oh. Because Stefan Diggs in the last four years in Buffalo got at least 103 catches every year. He's not getting that in Houston. They got Nico Collins, Joe Mixon, Dalton Schultz. They got uh, Tank Dell. If he was not happy in Buffalo getting 103 catches a year, I don't know what's going to make this guy happy. I really don't. Um uh, I don't see 103 catches going forward. He's only getting older. I think he's 30. Um, he's going to get 1,000 yards a year, but it's going to be way less uh, catches. And if they're not winning in the playoffs, it's the same thing that's going to happen in, uh, that happened in Minnesota and Buffalo. He clearly was not happy about, I guess, uh, enough usage, even though I see plenty of usage there. Uh, he got fed up with Josh Allen in terms of the targets he got. I don't I don't know how it's going to work out with Stroud. I mean, I'm sure it's going to work out great the first year, but if they don't make it to the Super Bowl within the first two years, he's going to find himself on the fourth team uh, by then. I like Stephon Diggs. I think he's a stud, but you got to be happy with what you're getting. 100-plus catches in four straight years, I don't know what else you could ask for. Now, I say it's a win-win for both teams because the Texans up, uh, uh, improve as a roster. Uh, you could you could make the argument they need another wide receiver. Take Del Torres, uh, I believe, is Achilles. Uh, could have been ACL. Regardless, he's not going to be ready to go immediately in September. Um, so they, they improve there. And uh, I think the Bills, now they don't have a great – wide receiver roster right now but they didn't they got a peace of mind like alphabet said and um and they can draft somebody at 28 and start over i mean we forget that the pick that the vikings got by letting go of digs turned out to be justin jefferson so uh you you, 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 you could you you could find uh stefan digs number two it's not easy but you could do it um, plus the Bills might as well try something new. It didn't work for four years in terms of getting them to a Super Bowl. So let's try something new. But overall, I don't know how, how Stefan Diggs is going to be happy in the end. He's not going to be ca catching 103 balls every year going forward. All right. What you, what you think you see? What you think? All right, man. Let me get this out of the way first. Um, you see my Saints hat? So do we have a bleep button on him? A what? Damn <laughs> Stephon Diggs, bro. <laughs> I have no love for that boy. 
<laughs> I have no love for. I hope he get cut. <laughs> That's what I hope. But uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, I'm referring to the Minnesota Miracle. Oh, That's I know. I <laughs> so I, I still, I still never forgave him for that. But um, but as far as the trade, I I would say I'm not gonna say it's a win-win for both teams, man. I don't believe in trading somebody and going down. Um, I don't believe in trading somebody and going down, making your team worse. I believe that they traded Stephon Diggs and now they're left with some scrubs, a wide receiver. They already lost uh Gabe Davis or whatever. So they don't even have their they don't even have their second best wide receiver. So they lost their top two wide receivers. Um and I agree with maybe changing their their philosophy in um in Buffalo as far as not throwing the ball as much and relying on the running game, but I mean that's what they've been doing too with Josh Allen. So I, I think that um I think you the writing has been on the wall like all season. He wasn't productive. I actually looked at a couple of the games. I'm like, why are they not throwing the ball to Stephon Diggs, man? Like I couldn't understand it. And then I started kind of looking at him. He wasn't really getting open either. You know, he he might be he might be losing the step. He might be losing the step. I know he's not that old, but he might be losing the step. Um, but I think this might be good for him going to a new team. Um, some people that are gonna be excited to see him come in there. And um probably um, like you said, he's not, he he's had a hundred catches over the last four years, except for last year. So I mean, he's not going to get 100 balls, but I think that he walks in and uh, his experience is going to put him at the top of their depth chart as far as uh, wide receiver. Although Tank Dell, um, if he does come back and he's anywhere close to what he was before he got injured, he is going to be their best wide receiver. And the trade was a the trade was a good team, a good trade for the Texans. Not so much. Uh, I think I even think Trayvon Diggs. I mean, uh, Stephon Diggs. I think he he came out better being in the um being in a new place. But I think the Bills that's they they didn't get better. They didn't get better. Maybe they can. I don't think they're gonna find. They're not gonna find a Jefferson in the draft. Not at the end. Not at the end like that. Not at the twenty eight spot. They can um, get your guy from LSU that you're so high on. Oh, Brian Thomas is gonna be gone, man. What are you talking about? Oh, oh no, God. no, he won't. Oh, no, he won't. He'll be at there, he'll be there at the back end of the first round. No, no, no. No, he's the same Buffalo that he straight up. And Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman, Coleman may be there. He may be there. He may be there because they, they had him sliding down a bit. But if anybody's smart, they'll pick him up before 28. They but can like also trade up. They can move up as well. So that, that could be a play that could do it in there. But Reek, what you thinking, Reek? Um, I'm a little different than uh, the guys before me. Uh, if you say who won, who won and lost this, I mean, immediately, obviously, Texas won. I think futuristically, Bills might win. We don't know what they're going to get with their picks that they got. The overhaul that they received, I think they can, they can get a lot for that. And the Texans are going to lose what they can build on that team eventually because they lost a lot of picks. So definitely, right now, directly, the Texans got one. But... The Bills, I think, eventually will be all right because Josh Allen is a stud as well, and I think he'll be okay. Um, a couple of things I can't remember who said what they were saying about who. The, uh, I think it was C who said uh, who does the Bills have? I think Curtis Samuel is going to be a big part of their offense. That they, they picked up Curtis Samuel. He's a very good receiver in space. He's not a deep receiver, but he's a receiver that catches the ball in space and makes things happen. Obviously, they got Kincaid. Kincaid's a good safety blanket, and uh, I can't ask his name. Shakir, I can't. I might be saying his name wrong. He's another good receiver, shifty receiver. I think they'll be okay. Um, as far as Houston, and as far as uh, I think uh, that box office said, I think it was something that said that uh, Diggs is upset about the uh, targets. If you hear what Diggs said a year ago, he's not upset about the targets. He's, he's upset about the targets and crunch time when they need to win, that he's not getting the targets and crunch time, not the overall targets that he's receiving in the game or a season, because obviously we all can count. He gets plenty of targets for a season. So that's not the reason why he's upset. He thinks that when they're losing games or it's a game that's tight, go to your best player. And he and he he says, I'm not saying that he's right, but he's saying that Josh Allen's scared to throw into double coverage when he's double, but he does it all game. He he's he's worried about making that big turnover at a big moment, but he's not worried about it during the rest of the game because he throws to him in double coverage all the other time. 
Um, so I think Brace, I think Diggs is he still can't really, he can't really say that. He can't really say that whenever in the in the Kansas City game when he's wide open and he hits him right in the hands and you, you can't scream right. I, I'm right. him and be like I'm him and then they hit you for a game winner. Josh Allen hits you right in the hands for a game winner and you drop the ball. So you know I think yeah, I think that sure. was the moment that divorce was kind of inevitable there. Him, like every other human receiver, has made a mistake and dropped the ball in the crunch time before. So right. I'm not I'm not gonna knock him on that neither. I think I don't think Diggs has lost a step. Is he 30? I think about 30. So yeah, he's only got about two, I think two more years of prime football. But you know, I still think Diggs is a dog. Uh let's let me just take you back really quickly. Every team that Diggs has been on, he's made better. Minnesota was better with Diggs, not with Jefferson. Is Jefferson a better receiver? I believe he is. But their winning was better when Diggs was there. And Buffalo was not even a thought of point before Diggs went there. Buffalo went up, Minnesota went down. Minnesota just got to the playoffs, I think, for the first time since Diggs left this year. Now they're saying Buffalo's on the decline, kind of, and they're saying Texas on the up. He goes to the Texans. I don't think it's a lose for Stephon Diggs. I think he's going to get a good place, get yourself your 80 catches or so, get yourself in an easier division, get in the playoffs, maybe get a bye, because you're probably going to have one of the best records in the AFC. I think he's in a good place. He just wants to win and get some good stats. He ain't got to be the number one receiver in the league. Get some good stats and win. And I think he'll be fine. No, okay. Rick. Minnesota was like 14 and 2. Yeah, right? they didn't make the playoffs this year. <laughs> yeah, last year. Excuse me, excuse me. Not this year, last year, last year, last year. Last year? <laughs> last year. And they were like 14 and 2. That's better than they were with Diggs. They had all, but but they was more consistently winning when Diggs was there. When Diggs and Thielen was there, they were always in the playoffs. Once he left, yeah. they wasn't. Okay, okay, okay. I'm kind of like basically all what you guys are saying. I'm kind of along the lines with that. Um, I love the fact that Buffalo got a second round pick for a 30 year old wide receiver. Like, that's fire for me. A second round pick for a 30 year old wide receiver, that's a win in my book. Well, that's I know next year, saying, though. And what happened? That's for 2025, though, right? That's hey, for 2025. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take that second round pick. For a 30 year old receiver, um, that if we're being honest, like you said, I just want to be real three catches for 21 yards against Kansas City and a big drop. Like, you can go and see. I know you said, Well, who you replacing them with, but they were obviously at odds. Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs were not on the same page, and I don't want to call him a cancer because that's not what I mean when I'm saying this. But if I have to choose one, choosing Josh Allen to go forward with than a 30-year-old receiver. I just am. And at the end of the day, I mean, it is what it is. I kind of look back when you think about the – I know I'm switching sports, but Kobe and Shaq, as good as I think Shaq is, at the time, you got to move on from Shaq and keep Kobe. It just is what it is. That was and tough. I'm saying to myself, do that. No, that maybe was tough. you wouldn't. Maybe you wouldn't. But they were obviously at odds. They didn't want to play together no more. So what I'm saying is – you can't make somebody play if they don't want to play for your organization no more. And I feel like Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen were at that point where they didn't want to be, be on the same team any longer. They might not come out to the public. It is what it is. And I think for as far as Houston, it's a definitely upgrade for this upcoming season. Um, they were a playoff team this past season. You add a guy like Stephon Diggs to whatever, with everything that you got already. C.J. Stroud, we already know, man. He, 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 he's, he's going there. He's going places. And you give him three top-notch wide receivers on the outside, my only concern for that is, is this is 30. If you don't win it this year, you don't win it next year, I mean, you basically gave up a second-round pick, hopefully to build up Nico Collins and take down. I don't know. But at the end of the day, like, I'm good on both sides. I think both teams made a good deal for where they're at currently. What you thinking, Keo? Enough of this, man. Um, <laughs> Here you go. Uh, um, <laughs> let me draw my attention to Josh Allen now. We want to talk about elite, how elite this guy is, how great he's a quarterback, top five quarterback. <laughs> like, like all, all you guys think Josh Allen's elite, right? We're going to find out if Josh Allen is elite this year because he doesn't have Stephon Diggs. And if Josh Allen is the quarterback that you think he is, um, then we're gonna see we're gonna see if this guy is elite or not. Because I don't think he's elite, but you know who I think is elite. Bob, not gonna bring his name up because we'll be here all day. Oh God! Um, 
Um, I, I think with the I think the Bills are definitely the losers in this trade. Your wide receivers for this season is Shahil. Shahil oh, if I pronounce his name wrong, I apologize. Khalil Shakir. Shakir. Khalil Shakir. Shakir. Curtis Samuel. You got KJ Hamler on your depth chart. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is not a team that's rebuilding or anything. This is a team that we always talked about. They're going to be Super Bowl contenders. They're going to be Super Bowl contenders. They're going to beat the Bengals. They're going to beat the Chiefs. But. Obviously, that never happens with them. Um, and I think I think when it comes it comes down to this is the Buffalo Bills, they found a way to win without Stefan Diggs. And in the NFL, is when they when you find when you find a way to win with your top player or your so-called best player or your top weapon, they're gonna get rid of you and and they're gonna you'll be gone by then. And they won. They found a way to win with him. I think it started to happen when they um, – what's the offensive coordinator's name? Your boy. Your boy, man. Yeah, Brady. Uh, yeah, Joe Brady. Once they switched off the coordinators, gave Joe Brady the the, the calls, um, they started winning. They went on that five-gaming winning streak, and Stephon Diggs had – Five receptions for 29 yards, four receptions for 30 yards. It, it was it wasn't Stefan Diggs type of numbers. And now that Stefan Diggs is going to the Texans, he is the number one receiver on that team, man. There's I, I don't think there's no reason why he shouldn't be the number one receiver. That's great, man. You got Nico Collins, man. You got Nico Collins. You got Take Dell. But you got Stefan Diggs, though. He's still a top wide receiver in the game. It's not like the dude lost his step. He still could ball. I think he's still going to get the numbers he gets. And I don't think his number is going to drop. I still think he's going to get what he gets. And listen, man, this past season, I've been very critical about C.J. Stroud. You got Stephon Diggs now. So you're giving me more reasons if you fail to get on you when it comes to C.J. Stroud. So I hope that doesn't happen because I wish C.J. Stroud the best. And I don't think there should be no excuses. And I think it should be easy for them to win the division because people talking about this team is loaded, bro. You, know, you got Joe Mixon. You got Tank Dell, Nico Collins. You re-signed your tight end. Daniel Hunter, you just signed that guy also on the defensive side. So I think this this is a good move for the Texans, but it's also a bad move for the um, Buffalo Bills. And I I I I'm pretty confident that they will not win their division. They'll be they'll be finished as high as third place in their division. And they'll be fighting for a division for sure. That 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 that's for sure. Yeah, and they'll be fighting for a wild card spot once again. And, and one thing before we get out of this last topic, I just want to say the NFL is a copycat league. I'm not by no means saying Kincaid is um, Travis Kelsey. By no means. I'm not saying that. But they drafted him in the first round. They believe that he's the future. And they yeah. saw what Kansas City is doing with Travis Kelsey. And I don't want to say a bunch of no names, but the receiving core, that really, really nobody really knew going into this season. Yes, Rice started to pan out. They traded Tyreek Hill. But you got to understand, it's a copycat league, and they like, we don't need a fan wide receiver that much money if we have a, a, a target like Kincaid, what they think he's going to be. 